Uh, so Patrick McAllister is the newest Green Party councillor in the country. Uh, he was elected in a by-election in Bristol just a week ago. And uh, in doing so, in that victory, he's made the Green Party the largest single group on Bristol City Council. So we're going to be talking about the impacts of that by-election and what it means for Bristol politics in general. But before we delve into any of that, Patrick, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, Chris. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. It's been a whirlwind of their first week of being elected, but a uh, very steep learning curve. But I've got an amazing team around me and I'm really looking forward to cracking on with the jobs. Brilliant. Well, we're going to delve into some of that now. Um, so firstly, nice and simple to start things off. How does it feel to have been elected as a Green Councillor? Uh, it, it's an enormous honour to be entrusted uh, with that responsibility by the people of Hotwells and Harborside, my ward in Bristol. Uh, I'm incredibly thankful to have had this opportunity and uh, to represent my area and I'm thrilled to be able to work in City Council to make hopefully make sure a real difference for people's lives in the future. Uh, it's a huge responsibility. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm still over the moon about the election result, really. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, it's a big challenge. There's lots of stuff to do, lots of things to learn, especially in the first couple of weeks. Um, so I'm just looking forward to trying to plowing through that really and getting to you getting used to systems that are in place and uh i'm in, just as i said again just incredibly thankful to the 24 councillors who are there already who are have been so supportive of me very i'm very grateful to all of them for all the help there uh but it it's just the, the thing which really sticks with me is the feeling you get when you have a positive response from a resident when you've helped them with some casework and you've actually managed to make a difference for them that's I've already had a couple of bit instances of that and it's just an amazing feeling and it's really uh it's all worth it for that I think <laughs> so your your win your election uh means the green party is now the single biggest party on Bristol City Council so there are 25 greens and 24 labor councillors what do you think this means for Bristol politics so in the immediate term uh we will probably get a few more seats on the committees maybe and possibly another committee chair role and those are important roles which often aren't so much in the public eye but they're really important for the government of the city uh, and additionally one more vote for the green party in the council chamber is really important we've got the city budget coming up later this month uh, and we it's look, look we're going to be voting on amendments to that and so on so one more green vote is going to make a big difference there we think for now uh for people who don't know uh bristol is under a mayoral system where a huge amount of the city's government power is concentrated in the elected mayor, who is a Labour member. At the next election, there will no longer be a mayoral um, position because we voted in the referendum last year to abolish the position. And we'll be moving to a more democratic committee model of government, which means uh, that hopefully, as the hopefully largest party in the city council at that point, and we're in a really good position to be that because we'll be moving into those ele local elections in 2024 as the largest party already. We hope to be running the council in the committee system as the administration it will be the first uh, Green Party administration in a core UK city ever. Uh, I think the longer term, the power of the moment is it's the symbolism. People in Bristol and the media in Bristol can see that we're the biggest party in the city now. We're the most popular party in the city. People know that if they vote Green, they can get Green. And that's a very powerful thing that I think the Green Party in general has struggled with a bit for a, my, most of its history. People are told a lot across the country that a Green vote is a wasted vote, but in Bristol, it's a winning vote. Uh, it's also um, the fi final thing I kind of want to talk about if, with this bit is uh, it's really quite symbolic because this seat has been Liberal Democrat for decades, very safe seat. And we uh, we beat in this campaign a former Liberal Democrat government minister. The result shows that Greens can win anywhere in Bristol and that Greens can take seats off any other party. It's not just we're, we're not just taking seats off Labour politicians. We're taking winning against Conservatives or winning against Liberal Democrats. I think that shows the broad appeal of the Green Party, not just in Bristol, but across the country. So you mentioned the uh, the citywide local elections that will be taking place in May next year. And indeed, that 
as after those elections, it will be uh, the first time in a while where Bristol City Council won't be governed through the mayoral system, but through a um, system that most uh, councils use. So in those local elections, uh, do you think that the Greens are going to emerge as the largest party and will be running the council after May next year? Yes, I, I do absolutely think we'll be the largest party uh, going into the next set of elections. Uh, I think we will be forming the administration as uh, the first, as I said, the first core city in the UK to have a green administration. I think it will be a hugely symbolic moment for the whole country uh, as it will reach over direction of travel and politics for the future. Uh, we spent the last year and a half building a world class election winning organisation here in Bristol. I couldn't be more proud of the system we've got going at the for us at the moment, I couldn't be more excited for the new crop of candidates we've got ready to end City Hall themselves as the next batch of green councillors here. Uh, it's important to note we because just but just because we're the largest party, that doesn't mean we're going to be ruling alone. The committee system will require collaborative working between parties. We think that that's a strength, not a weakness. And that's why that the Greens campaigned uh, by and large for that system in the referendum we had last year to re remove the mayoral system. So um, I'm going to move on to the general election question in a bit, but there's some great questions that have come in about Bristol and local elections and so on, which uh, have come in from the chat that I wanted to put to you. Um, so Steve C asks, what are the key things that have been done in Bristol to get to the position where there are now 25 green councillors that could be done in other cities, uh, for example, like Sheffield, where there's been a slowing of momentum? Um, and a related question from Jake Welsh. Jake asks, what challenges have Bristol Green Party had in terms of building their councillor number across multiple worlds, wards within the city? And have you at any point suffered from re resources being stretched too thin? Uh, that's a really good question. So um, in terms of what we've done in Bristol to get to this point, um, it's three words. I think everyone's probably tired of hearing them, but it's target to win. They are and that we we were lucky in that we were a fairly I think early adopter of target to win strategy, um, but and I think while the demographics of Bristol do swing in our favour in a lot of ways, we are not just strong in areas where we are you would expect us to be based off demography. We we've been working at this for a long time, um, been built slowly building strength, and that has been that has snowballed. Um, we are fortunate um, to have a concentration of amazing people here, but I don't think that that's specific to Bristol. I think the effects of building campaigns over time will snowball. It just takes a decade to get to the position that Bristol is in now. Um, I don't, you know, we are, we're we standing on the shoulders of giants who came before us and helped make this situation possible. So what my message here really is don't think like Brist we are, ahead of the pack so to speak but that's because we've been sort of plugging away at target to win for a long time it's i don't think there's any reason that other local parties can't get to the position we're in now uh with proper management and application of our electoral strategies and so the second question there was around whether you found yourself in a position where resources have been too stretched at any point um, and how you've overcome the challenges of uh spreading the green councillor base across a wide number of wards in the city yeah uh it's it's an issue um we've got some amazing an amazing staff team here in bristol um and we've got an, a really good fundraising operation as well uh, and those obviously feed into each other and uh you need you can't really have one without the other uh we need we in the green party we do we do need to be doing more work at Fund, proper fundraising and go, you know, going after um, all the sources of revenue that we can access. And we would need to be investing that in staff capacity because it's staff who are properly trained and have the time to devote to these things who can then work on writing literature for dozens of ward campaigns at the same time, not to mention a general election campaign, which uh, we've obviously also got in Bristol at the moment. Uh, I think in, in staff fundraising and then making sure that all of that operation is overseen by a really cohesive and smoothly working management structure so sorting out the uh constitution documents i suppose from first principles is really important and making sure that you've got people who are reliable and 
dedicated in those management roles is super important, I think, to really build the foundations of success. So let's chat now about the general election. So uh, many of our viewers won't be surprised to know that Bristol is one of the best prospects the Greens have of winning a second MP. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Carla Denyer, the party's co-leader, is the Greens candidate in what's currently the Bristol West constituency and is going to become Bristol Central. And your by-election victory takes the tally of Green councillors in Bristol West up to 17 out of the 20 seats there are Mm -hmm. in Bristol West. What do you think uh, your election tells us about the upcoming general election in Bristol West? Uh, I think it tells us that our chances of electing a second MP are closer than they've ever been before. Uh, As you say, we've got 17 out of 20 councillors in the constituency and we've already got some amazing graphics to go out on the next pieces of literature for every ward in that in that constituency showing that it's again, as I said earlier, it's the if you want green, you can vote green and get green. That's a really powerful message that we as the Green Party haven't had the opportunity to put out too much, but it's something we can put out now in Bristol. We've got the time to do it. Um, Excuse me. People in Bristol are used to voting green. We had the most votes in the last EU uh, parliament elections. And then now we're also the largest group. People like what they see when they vote green when we're elected. Uh, In terms of Carla personally, uh, she's been she's done phenomenally in the last few years. She's got a lot more prominence in Bristol now than she's had before as local councillor and MP candidate and a really active campaigner and all sorts of things. She regularly sought after for media interviews, which is a really nice position for us to be in. Um, I know there is some scepticism in the party somewhere, um, some, some in, among some quarters, about like what, how realistic is it to get an MP in Bristol? I think, to bear in mind, in 2019, we had a three-month head start for, camp, for the campaign, and we still came a strong second, but now that we've been ruthlessly focused on building for the next general election for the last you know, two and a bit years, and we'll continue to do that right up until the next general election, we've built a fantastic operation, not just for local elections, but also for the general election. We've got a much smooth, we've got a much larger operation, we've got more volunteer capacity, got, um, better, you know, as I said, better sort of fundraising um, abilities. I think having this second MP is so important for the Green Party as a whole. It will propel us to win more MPs across the whole of the UK in every sort of seat. And I'm really looking forward to the next general election campaign and help having sort of Greens join us from around the whole country to help fight this historic campaign. So while I give people an opportunity to put any final questions they have for you in the chat, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I'm shopping. going to say, uh, from your perspective... Making a call today, do you think that Carla Denyer will be a member of parliament after the next election? I absolutely do think that, yes. And I'm really excited to help make that a reality. So that's a, a bold prediction that I'm sure you will be held to um, in the next election. Um, I think I saw a final other question that came in earlier, but I'm just going to try and dig it out now. If you bear with me for one moment, Uh, it's been quite a busy chat. Um, I'm glad to to be popular. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So the question is, uh, you've just been elected. What are the biggest issues you want to tackle in Bristol? Uh, so in my ward specifically, there is a huge problem with community consultation or the lack thereof. We've got a lot of really controversial proposals and developments which have been rammed through in the past with not really any, not, no, there's no sort of ability or desire to determine community consent for these things. And that's not, it's not just in my ward, it's a big issue in my ward, but it does go across the city. I think one of the reasons the current Labour administration is so unpopular is because it's been ignoring communities for so long on lots of these things um i i do want to say everything we do as a local authority is in the backdrop of a decade or more of funding cuts and from local government the every budget we pass is a cuts budget because so the biggest cha- single challenge probably is just the impact of austerity politics on local authorities and what we can afford to deliver uh, I don't want to sugarcoat that at all. Uh, I'm sure, Chris, you're familiar with this as, as a councillor yourself. Um, 
we this is why we need a, to have a strong showing at next general election so we can show the whole country that there is a desire for politics beyond austerity and i think beyond what either of the two main parties are offering brilliant well thank you so much for your time today patrick um hope the technical issues weren't too stressful um but i'll let you get with the rest of your sunday it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for having me chris it's been an absolute pleasure sorry about the wi-fi mm-hmm.